Welcome to my audiobook, Real Relationships. We're going to start with the love relationship, the romantic relationship. And today we want to talk about the triangle of love. I believe there's a triangle of love and when the triangle works, the relationship works. And when the triangle doesn't work so well, some of the points of the triangle don't work, then you're going to actually have to work on those aspects of your relationship. In the love relationship, there are three aspects. There's, there's the love that you have for each other. There's a the chemistry because uh, it'll be a physical relationship too and there'll be a kind of a chemistry telepathically. And then there's the harmony. And the harmony is important because without harmony, our lives are full of fighting and arguing and tension and negative energy. The first one I would speak about, of course, is the love one, that in a romantic relationship we are in love with that person. We meet them and we fall in love with them either slowly or quickly. Sometimes we know within days and other times it just grows slowly and then it blossoms. But the love is there. The amount of love at the beginning is quite strong because we are actually fall very in love with that person and they consume our thoughts. There are two kinds of love that we can have for the person. We can have one or the other or a mixture the first one is unconditional love, where we love that person unconditionally. And unconditional love it means that we love them and we will easily forgive them. We will tolerate lots of things in the relationship and we will not punish them. We might get angry with them, we might even need space when we're processing things away from them and need time out, but we won't punish them. There isn't punishment with unconditional love. We just remain loving them, have a talk about it, discuss what didn't work, and then try and move on and compromise. And there's usually forgiveness, always in unconditional love, always forgiveness. We might not forgive straight away, but we will come to a place where we can forgive. Unconditional love is different. We love the person, and we do love them. However, when they don't do what we want, or they won't do what we tell them, that they should do or say that they should do, when they won't cooperate and do it exactly how we say, we will punish them. And that's where the punishment comes in. Now, there are various sorts of punishment that we can inflict. We can withhold our love by not talking to them, um, isolating ourselves from them, being mean to them, doing something which is punishing, like not go out with them, um, not help them with something, not support them, neglect them. And unconditional love that never does this. Unconditional love isn't into punishment. It's into love and compromise and forgiveness. Conditional love is into punishment. And that's how you can tell the difference. The love will be withdrawn and you will feel it, that they love you, but now they won't love you. They won't be loving toward you. They will just be mad with you or upset with you or shut you out. And they will do emotional abuse in the sense that they will hurt your feelings and they will shut you out. People can also have a mixture. They can have unconditional love towards you, but also have conditional. One will usually be bigger than the other. I notice with people who have unconditional love, they don't tend to have a lot of conditional at all. But people who have conditional love have a lot of conditional and maybe only a little bit of unconditional. It's got a lot to do with our upbringing. If we were brought up in a household where there was conditional love, we learned how to use it and how to do it. And we learned how to punish other people because we were being punished. In these sort of homes, unfortunately, the pattern is kind of set. It's got a lot to do with control and power. Conditional love is a power play from a love point of view. And it will take us a lot of time and a lot of effort in our life to actually change that. It really takes a lot to change that. We have to really work hard at it. It can also be in our genes, in our DNA, that we love the person conditionally. We can be wired that way, and that's gonna take a lot of time for you to change that. It's important to realize how you do it and start watching yourself. Are you an unconditional, are you an unconditional person? who loves unconditionally, they love unconditionally, or you are a conditional love person. And you can see it in your reactions and actions with them. You will punish if you're a conditional love person. You'll always be punishing them. They'll always be in trouble for something, and they will never, ever please you. 
if you are with somebody who's an unconditional love person, you will know because you'll always feel safe with them emotionally. They'll always be there. They won't withdraw it. However, if they're a conditional love person, it can be a little bit on and off. And so if you do something wrong or upset them, they'll withdraw the love because it's conditional. The amount of love is also important. I don't think we all love to the same degree. I think some people have a greater capacity to love than others for a variety of reasons. And so if you're in a relationship and there's two of you, you will probably not love equally. Of course, it's good if you do have about the same amount for one another because that's going to actually make it easier in your relationship. The love relationship will be more balanced. But I think you've got to be a realist and understand that, you know, some people can love as big as a bucket and the bucket will be full of love for you. And other people can only love as big as a thimble. And even though their thimble is full, it's not as big as the bucket. And you just have to understand that people's capacity to love and to give love is actually different. And if you're with a person who's an unconditional person who loves, their capacity to give love will be great. They will not only love you, but they will give you love and they will express it. However, if you're with the conditional love person, their capacity to give love is much limited. They might love you, but they don't give you love. And you might need to look at that dynamic. You, you can feel it. You can feel that they say it, but you can't feel it coming to you almost energetically. These things are really important in the love bucket. How we express our love is also important how we meet the needs of a person in a loving way and give them what they need, not what we need. That's what love does. Love gives the other person in the relationship what they need. We, of course, look after ourselves in our own relationship with ourselves, but in the relationship we try to give it to them first. And that's also where you'll find some problems, like it might not be equal. You might feel that you put your partner first all the time and are ready to step back with yourself, but you might feel that your partner does not put you first. They always put themselves first. And you will find this with selfish people, they'll always put themselves first and you kind of get what's left over. Sometimes they put you first, but often they'll come from a selfish place. They put you first because they're trying to win brownie points because they're in trouble in some way in their life they've been messing up or they put you first because they think it's a good move for right now because they want something. There's another ulterior motive sometimes when they're like this. You might want to really have a look at this. Are your needs being met from a love point of view from this partner of yours? Are you meeting their needs from a love point of view? And that's quite important as well in the relationship. It's the because it creates the balance. We're supposed to love them look after them and support them and meet their needs. That's what love does. The investment is also important. This sort of crosses into this one. It's how much we invest love-wise. Some people make a, a great love investment. They love you basically to, to the moon and back, as we say, to the children. And their investment is great. They invest greatly in this part of the relationship, in the love part of the relationship with you you will feel it, you will feel the boundless love that they have for you and they will express it constantly in so many ways. Some people do not invest so much on the loving in their ways they love you. They might love you but they don't make a great investment in it. It's kind of like they take it for granted and they probably just think it will always be there and they, you know, I've told you I love you, I don't have to tell you again kind of attitude and that's all about the investment and that's something you might want to look at because that's actually quite important how much each of you are investing. If you're both investing around the same amount it works and it even works if for example you're not both investing very much but that's the investment level you both are very comfortable with because some people don't want that much love. It, it's too smothering for them, it's too much for them, they're not used to it it makes them actually feel kind of vulnerable. And so they might be happy to be with another partner who is the, feels the same and you just love each other to a, a certain degree, but it's you're not going to invest too much. You're just going to do a bit and, and that's fine. 
it, it's about the two of you. It's not about the individual. It's about the match. And if you have a good love match, you'll be about equal in all these areas. If you don't have such a good match, love-wise, there'll be one will be getting bigger and one will be like much smaller. And you can work on shoring that up and making them a little bit more equal. The other aspect of the love part in this section I'm talking today is whether you are really in love with that person or that you just love them now. That little statement, that horrible little statement that people say is, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And in love with you is like an action thing. In, in love with you is moving. It's not static. If you're in love with someone, it's moving. The love is moving. Your actions towards them are moving. It's, it's got motion in it. And that's emotion, isn't it? Whereas I love you like that, but I'm not in love with you. That first part, I love you, means I love you. <laughs> that's about all. And I'm not really going to act on it and I'm not going to work on it. And it just is. That is a really hard one, and I think that at the beginning people will be in love with someone, but now they just love them. It's kind of like how you just love an, a friend or an acquaintance who you're not too close to. It doesn't have proximity, whereas I'm in love with you has proximity, and it's talking about the us, about the togetherness, whereas I love you it seems to be kind of single. It, it, it's just different. Have a look at all these things. You'll find it really interesting when you start to think about it and how much should people love, whether it's conditional or unconditional, how much they invest, how much they're in love and how much they give love. Because if you're a person who's very giving and gives love and expresses and invests and you are an unconditional person who loves and that type of person and you're with someone who's the actual opposite, they might still love you, but your quality of love that you're getting back is completely different to what they're getting. It's like you're giving the crayfish and the caviar and the big champagne and you're just getting like bread and butter and a glass of water. It's not the same. And you have to work out if you're happy with that and to live with that uh, in that aspect or you'd like to talk to them about maybe expressing more love, maybe meeting your needs more trying to love you more unconditionally and this also goes for you because you might be listening to this and you might be the person who loves conditionally and doesn't invest and isn't in love anymore there's a sadness when people say that because it feels to me that they've lost that that spark that magic of love that it's not actually there anymore and that's a sadness so you might want to actually see if you can sort of get that going again and to focus on what you love in your partner, to focus on what you love in your partner, not to focus on what's wrong with them all the time and their annoying habits and irritating. Focus on what's good and that will help your relationship to become more loving. You focus on what's good. You praise people. You appreciate people. You be grateful for people. You love how the hair is or you love how kind they are or you love how they can fix things. It doesn't really matter what it is. Because when you're first in love, you don't see any of the negatives too much. And if you do, you just kind of push them aside. When you start to be with a person longer, you actually start to see the negatives. And if you're not careful, that's all you see. And you forget and take for granted all the other good things they're doing, like you've got a headache and they let you rest and mind the children and get you a nice pack and get you some Panadols. You come in late and they've started cooking tea and they've got everything organised. You know, they sorted out the bills for you because they knew you were really busy. You just lose sight of all that. You won't see that anymore because you take it for granted. And I really implore you to start to see the loving and the good things that they do and to tell them how much you appreciate it. Because at the end of the day, we're humans and all we want is to be loved and appreciated. And if you love and appreciate somebody, your relationship will be good. So that's the first part today on the love aspect of the triangle and I hope you find something that can help you in your relationship and also shed some light on the parts that are working and aren't working that you might have to work on, they might have to work on or you both 
have to work on. So I'm sending you lots of love in this podcast.